Hi everyone. Karibu ni sana to part 2 of our session with Dr. Alan and now we are going to go in depth and talk about vaccinations. Karibu sana daktari. Thank you very much for having me okay. in your channel. <laughs> awesome. So doc. Mhm. Mm I have a cat. Yes. She came on heat. Yes. Disappeared for two days. Oh no. Comes back pot belly. Yes. <laughs> um a few weeks later she give birth. Yes. What should I vaccinate my kittens against? Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, sorry for the unfortunate incident. <laughs> uh, nature has its way of mm -hmm. determining its course, but mm -hmm. in the event that that happens, so we start vaccinations as early as six weeks. Okay. And what do we vaccinate against? Number one is we vaccinate against cat flu. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cat flu is a cocktail of mainly three vaccines namely Kalisi virus mm -hmm. okay which is basically a viral viral infection that affects cats uh, feline panleukopenia what mm -hmm. people commonly regard or call pavo mm -hmm. in cats mm -hmm. and lastly rhinotracheitis so the reason why this diseases are regarded as a cat flu vaccine is because the symptoms associated with this virus is present like with flu like symptoms mm. or clinical mm. signs so you want to start your vaccinations as early as 6 weeks uh normally depending on where you're staying so we can delay the second booster to up to 12 weeks okay but if where you're staying they've been incidences of cat flu reported then we recommend you do a booster at 9 weeks okay mm -hmm. then by the time you're getting to 12 weeks when you're doing another booster uh, this is where you you rope in rabies okay and rabies basically is a zoonotic disease so when i say zoonotic disease i mean it's a disease that can affect both humans and animals okay mm -hmm. and so your vaccination here is actually twofold okay what now is regarded as one health mm -hmm. so you ensure you have a healthy pet and a healthy pet owner yeah. and uh, then normally you want to do your boosters annually mm -hmm. and uh, depending on your jurisprudence and where you are like i know in some countries overseas the vaccination is repeated every 3 years okay in kenya rabies is endemic mm -hmm. endemic in simpler terms just means it's common okay okay and we haven't been able to eradicate the disease so the recommended uh, protocol is that you repeat the boosters for the cat flu and the rabies every year okay yes all right and i know there are areas in kenya that are the rabies is more endemic yes. than others yes. would you like to shed more light on what those areas are uh, no judgment uh, <laughs> no it would sound like i'm throwing shade on some regions but basically areas in generally mm -hmm. areas that border uh, the wild mm -hmm. where there's interaction between the wild and then uh, the domestic so you're thinking areas around parks uh, and you can define that around Nairobi so this does this same schedule of uh, vaccination apply to puppies uh, it's a bit different for puppies so more so because Yes the rabies vaccine is given for puppies mm -hmm. but uh, it's a different uh, uh, arrangement for puppies the first vaccine is called pavo mm -hmm. so and it protects against pavo virus infection and basically this is a viral infection that uh, basically it's up your gut okay. going down and oh, wow. you hear of clients saying uh, bloody diarrhea and there are myths around Kenya in relation to this disease uh, some people believe that my dog or puppy ate its tooth and that's why it died mm -hmm. but normally because this vaccine is done at 6 weeks mm -hmm. and that's when they are almost finishing teething ah. so people normally associate that with the tooth mm -hmm. and normally what kills the dogs is not even that tooth mm. it's actually that virus it's the virus yes so that's done at 6 weeks we do boosters at 9 weeks so what do we vaccinate at 9 weeks so canine distemper mm -hmm. hepatitis basically is a liver uh, it affects the liver of a dog 
leptospirosis also affects the liver of a dog and uh, clinical signs and we can maybe expand about that later mm -hmm. uh, uh, yellowing of uh, your mucous membranes so leptospirosis parvo we do the second boost at nine weeks and para influenza mm -hmm. the products in the market normally come in as a cocktail so mm -hmm. uh, what you've had people refer in the acronym dhl ppi mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and basically you do that at nine weeks then follow it up at 12 weeks the same booster DHL PPI yes. and now do rabies then depending on the breed type especially the large breeds because they get prone to the parvovirus infection it's normally recommended that you repeat another booster parvo between 15 to 16 weeks just to ensure that the immunity is all covered okay yes and, and you have your dogs okay then again you repeat that every year and the large breeds are which dog uh, Common in the country, German Shepherd dogs, mm -hmm. GSDs as we commonly know, know them as, yeah. Rottweilers, yeah. Uh, Great Danes, mm -hmm. uh, Russian Mountain dogs, mm. we have the Dobermans, mm. uh, we have uh, South African Boar Bells, mm. or Boar Bull, uh, we have uh, basically uh, the dogs that in your natural eye look big. Okay. <laughs> Just okay. to help the viewer. Yes. Sour, sour. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a cat. Yes. And I've had uh, UTIs are common. Yes. Among especially indoor cats. Yes. So how do I prevent my cat from getting a UTI? And what is a UTI in the first place? Uh, so basically a UTI is a urinary tract infection. Okay. Why are they common in cats? Is because of the kind of setup. Uh, we find ourselves in, especially if you live uh, around town establishments where uh, the cat is not doing mostly outdoor. Okay. So if your cat wants to do its business, it, 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 uh, he or she has a cat litter that is positioned at a certain place in the house yeah. and uh, they'd be able to relieve themselves. Uh, Cats are unique uh, animals in the sense that if the litter tray or where they do their business is dirty, some cats will keep off. Mm. Okay, so what brings about UTIs generally, it's not the only way, but generally is them holding their urine for a long time. So what happens is when your cat holds the urine, okay, uh, that becomes a very good medium for bacteria to multiply and over and above bacteria multiplying is that they also tend to to have to form like crystals okay mm -hmm. and you've heard of a, and we see it all the time a client telling you my baby is unable to urinate comfortably or my son or daughter in this in this context being the pet <laughs> keeps doing rounds to the cat litter and yeah. uh, they seem very uncomfortable and they keep leaking themselves, okay? That in itself is a sign that your cat has a urinary tract infection, mm. okay? So going by the setup of them not being able to release yeah. the, and, uh, the urine and keep holding the urine, that's how they get prone to urinary tract infections. Wow. How to go about it? Of mm -hmm. course, you want to to seek uh, veterinary expertise to go around in the event that it has happened to do the curative side. Yeah. But preventable, regularly clean your cat litter, okay? Regularly clean your cat litter, hydrate your pet, mm. hydrate your pet. Ensure there's easy and, and clean access of water. Okay, so Doc, you've said uh, we need to hydrate our cats, yes. our pets, yes. generally. Yes. So what should I be hydrating my pet on except water? Because I drink water, I drink uh, flavoured water, I drink tea, I drink coffee. So let me throw the question back to you. Because at, at least I, 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 we see Kajangwe or KJ. Mm -hmm. what, what do you normally do? Maybe I can hear it from you. <laughs> so for KJ, I give her Maji uh -huh. and I give her a lot of soup as well. Okay. Yeah, just regular bone soup. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So broth is actually one creative way. Mm. Okay. Uh, what I've seen guys do, which is actually a myth people have, is that uh, cats are into milk 
or milk is for cats mm -hmm. and it's actually a myth okay the science around it is that majority not all not majority of cats are what we call lactose intolerant okay so what would happen is that they react to a particular sugar in the milk so you'd always be seeing a client complain hey this cat of mine is always releasing some deadly okay. or is having loose stool and normally the culprit is the milk mm. because growing up you're told hey uh, why are you consuming uh, too much milk like a cat mm. or the, the various meats around a uh, cat and milk okay and, and tom and jerry had a yes. lot to do with that yes yes yeah. we blame it on the producers of tom and jerry <laughs> if you're giving your cat wet food naturally wet food is high in moisture, moisture. content okay. and that in itself would keep your pet hydrated so uh, we can just get creative around spaces don't do funny things like giving uh, juices and uh, keep off such okay. yes. so let's talk about deworming yes um, why is deworming necessary okay. uh, and what how do I know I'm my puppy or my kitten is due to be dewormed okay what happens when I don't deworm okay one one thing that needs to come out clear is that worms and basically these are parasites are actually life-threatening in puppies and kittens mm -hmm. okay the older the pet is the more they're able to deal with with with, with the, the 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 worms okay so it's very critical and important for our viewers to know that deworming is very critical mm -hmm. when you're choosing a dewormer product so and the vet is best pleased to advise this mm -hmm. you want a deworming tablet that is able to kill roundworms yeah and from your home setup they look like pasta or spaghetti mm. okay mm. Or, or thread okay so those are called roundworms so you need a dewormer that's active against roundworms tapeworms basically from the word tips mm. so they look equivalent to be what rice Mm. So when your kitten or your puppy poops, uh, forgive the term, uh, <laughs> it looks like uh, rice, mm. okay? So it's a tapeworms and you also need a dewormer that's against hookworms okay. and other types of worms. But the three, three major ones, hookworms, roundworms and tapeworms, those mm. ones are actually life-threatening to puppies and kittens okay so it's very critical to have them deworm when do you do it yeah you start as early as two weeks okay and you repeat it every two weeks until the kitten or the puppy turns three months yes once the kitten or the puppy turns three months you repeat it monthly until the kitten or the puppy turns six months then after that you do it every three months but again for your dog setup or your cat setup depending on when they're adults where they're staying so if they're strictly indoors they're not on a raw diet the duration of course can vary mm. so but a vet is best place to advise you on what what is actually practical with your circumstances okay and so can i just walk into an agro vet buy a pill and administer unfortunately that has been the practice here mm -hmm. uh, which i discourage okay reason being a veterinarian is best place to advise you unless uh, that prescription from the agrovet is coming from the vet who knows your pet yeah. and is aware on, on, on the general status of your pet. Let's now move to you know nutrition and, and particularly pet obesity. Mm. Yes. So obesity uh, has become Okay, I see a lot of, okay, what's the difference between one? My cat is fat yeah. and my cat is obese. A guiding principle is when you're looking at your cat from a bird's eye view. Mm -hmm, from okay, above. From above, mm -hmm. okay. There should be a dip between the stomach going into the hip area. Okay. Okay. Yeah. If it's a good straight line, uh -huh, we are getting fat. If there's a bulge around that area, we are on the obese side so uh, that would just be a guiding principle okay. also the ribs would also be an indicator and normally for cats they have what we call a primordial pouch yes yes so depending on how low it is it can also tell you whether we need to work <laughs> Out. uh, 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 a bit yes. so the primordial pouch is that little like bit of skin yes around the tummy area yes okay yes. So, so the lower the 
the higher the, uh, the fat content yes or, yeah the generally, fat. generally okay all right sour sour so i've realized that my cat is getting on the fat side yeah. um do, should i change the diet or exactly what should i what should i do at that time so what you need to do is investigate when you noticed the flip in terms of the weight gain mm. some cats tend to put on weight when they've been sterilized yes okay yeah so once your cat has been neutered so mm -hmm. you it's a conversation you want to have with your vet mm -hmm. are we going slow on the diet are we changing the diet or what are we doing but the vet is best place to advise if obesity is not checked issues of heart attack we've ha have had cats or dogs suffer heart attacks mm. uh, issues of diabetes type 2 diabetes and yes basically what you'd even see in human beings yeah. is somewhat replicated in the in the, in the pets yes yes so yeah. just to avoid yes yeah yeah i know mm. and we all want to live you know long with our pets yeah. that's that's, that's, the that's best a plan quality of life that's a plan okay yes. um people clip the nails of their pets yes and there are a lot of risks involved with yes. clipping, you know, yes. your nails, I mean, your yeah. pet's nails, especially with your regular yes. nail cutter yes. and you not knowing exactly yeah. how to go about it. Yes. So please walk us through how that should be done. Okay. Uh, so it's, 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 so how the nail is designed. So one, you want to, to, to know, are you dealing with a cat, mm -hmm. kitten, mm -hmm. or are you dealing with a dog? Okay. Uh, it, it would be easier to handle a cat, for example, and you'd want a proper nail clipper, okay? And normally, if you are able to, and just to clarify, nail clipping, because some people think nail clipping is declawing. Mm. Nail clipping is not declawing. Nail clipping is basically trimming the nails, okay? And what's declawing? Uh, declawing is removing the nail, mm. which is inhumane. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. and totally, and we are normally totally against it, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a practice that has been banned world over. Mm -hmm. Yes, because mm -hmm. it's against animal welfare. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to take you through the nail clipping, if you are able to run your your hand on the cat's paw, the nails will come out. Okay, then normally there's the clear part, and there's a part that looks red. Okay, so basically the red part is where you have your blood vessels and your nervous system gets in there. Yeah. So if you're doing it from home and this you can do with the proper tool, you want to cut the nails just before you get to where the red part is. Mm. And normally the pet would be able to communicate with you. If you're yeah. going way too deep in, the, the cut will jack up. Mm. Okay. Uh, it's a challenge for dogs that have a purely black black nails oh, yeah. yeah so a guiding principle is where from beneath where the nail turns like turns down you okay. just cut uh, okay. but uh, for dogs again what what is practical is just have a dog run on a rough surface like mm -hmm. a cabro or paved uh, surface or some tarmac and they'd naturally be able to file oh. so <laughs> some free money pedi <laughs> advice so that works for cats, it's different because they like scratching. Yeah. Uh, from a traditional setup, they would naturally clip the nails as they go up trees. Yeah. Uh, but uh, with, with the current setup is that they would, the most they have is what a scratching post Carpet. or yeah. your favorite uh, seat. Mm -hmm. So, and for that, they sharpen the nails. So if you're in doubt or you're getting ideas, just consult your veterinarian and they'd be able to take you through the do's and don'ts. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much again for doing you know, this episode with us. I think now everyone watching, you have a pretty good idea of what the basics of healthcare for your pet are in terms of vaccination, deworming, and a little bit of nutrition. So in case you want to get in touch with Dr. Alan, so how can, how can we reach you? On Facebook, uh, Ella Veterinary Clinic. Uh, you can also write to us, ellavetclinics at gmail.com and we'll be able and glad to respond and support you in that journey. So I will also place the links to his pages on in our description box and then you can go ahead and get in touch with him in case you need any more clarification. Hi everyone, I'm back and I have some amazing news. 
If you want to support the Rescue Pets Kenya channel, now you can because we have merchandise on sale. So we have this t-shirt, it says, I like big mats and I cannot lie. <laughs> So yeah, I like big mats and I cannot lie. It's going on sale at 11.99. That's 1,199 shillings. And all proceeds go towards production and the assisting of animals towards better lives, treatment, and healthcare. If you like the content on this channel and you would like to give, we have a pay bill. It's 5700485. I'm happy that you're watching. Thank you for sticking with us this whole time and i look forward to shooting the next episode and sharing our journey with pets with you guys and uh action we want to know when you should vaccinate your vet do me a favor please get out of here get out of here man Shit, i'm saying <laughs> <laughs>